This video starts in the form of a question. What Kodak cameras used 120 film after it had introduced 620 film in 1932? While you might think the answer is none, the actual answer is one camera, which had three models. And here it is, the Kodak 66. So let's take a closer look at the Kodak 66. Kodak introduced a 120 roll film to the world in 1901. In 1932, it introduced 620 film and never made another camera that took 120 roll film, except, except for these cameras here. This is the only Kodak model that took 120 film after it had introduced 620 film. As you can see, this is Kodak 66 Model 2 and Kodak 66 Model 3. They share the same body shell. You can see the layout's the same, and uh, you know, generally the uh, struts are the same. Everything is the same, except for the lens and shutter. Uh, th there is a minor difference here, and, and I'll explain that in a bit. So the, these two cameras both offered uh, very simple shutters. I believe these were Velio shutters. They might have been, um, I don't really know the uh, history of the Velio shutter. Oh. Well, the earlier model, Model 2, I've been looking for a Model 1, but these are some surprisingly uncommon. This carries a 3-speed shutter, 50, 25, and 200. And this has a 5-speed th shutter, 1 tenth of a second, 25, 50, 100, and 200. Both of these have the ability to take a uh, cable, cable release. And otherwise, you know, like I said, they're very similar. This has a... 75 millimeter, um, 75 millimeter Aniston lens. I don't know if that's a triplet or if it's four elements. In any case, uh, maximum aperture here is 6.3, which is actually pretty small for that time. And maximum aperture on this lens is 4.5. And this also is a 75 millimeter lens, which would make sense because uh, it's, you know, like I said, they're basically the same camera. If you turn them upside down, they really are identical. But the only difference between uh, the earlier model and presumably the first model and this one is this one has double exposure prevention. This little tab comes out when the film hasn't been advanced to the next frame. On the back, this has no frame counter. On the back, you simply would read the number of the, uh, the number on the film through the little red window. Same for both cameras. Inside, it's uh, they're both very basic. In fact, it says, as you can see, load with 120 film. Once again, pressure plate. The pressure plate's job is to keep the film flat against these film rails as it travels across the uh, film plane. Fresh roll film goes here, take up spool goes here, and you simply just wind. When you want to put in your fresh roll, just pull this up and you, you'll be able to pop that in. This is a fixed uh, little post down here, it doesn't move. So pull up in that, pop in your fresh roll film, take your film leader, paper leader, run it across here, uh, insert it into the slot of the take up spool, just wind it around a couple times, close the back, lock it, and then continue winding until you see one come up in the window. Now you'll notice after you release the shutter, this little tab comes out. I'm thinking maybe I'll get a tiny amount of red paint or something and put it on there. So that means uh, red means uh, not ready. Both cameras, like as I mentioned, operate similarly. This one does not have the double exposure prevention. So you can simply take as many photos as you want on the same frame. So what this really does is it, um, it, it forces you to get in the habit of either winding on to the next frame after you take a shot or not winding onto the next frame, but always using that same, um, that same method when using this camera. Both of these actually have self-erecting struts. These haven't been opened in a while. The idea is when you press this button on the top deck, it should open and lock into place. These cameras haven't been opened in a while. So oh, there, that one did it correctly. They're very, uh, they're very simple cameras. They're viewfinder cameras. Uh, you have to guess on the focus. These have leather covered bellows. They've held up quite well over the years. I think this might be 
I'm not sure it's leather. It's a type of fabric. Maybe it is leather with a fabric bath backing. Not really sure. Uh, not really had a problem with it. It's uh, held up very nicely through the years. From what I read, these were produced from 1958 to 1960. Although they're low-cost cameras, you don't see them on the market too often today, simply because of the fact that um, there probably weren't too many made. I thought I remembered. I thought I remembered years ago reading that uh, Kodak had allowed um, its UK arm to make these cameras. You know, because as I mentioned, in general, once Kodak released, not in general, but uh, very specifically, once Kodak released 620 film, it never produced another 120 uh, film camera, except for the Kodak 66. But certainly not none made by its uh, German. Uh, partners in Stuttgart and none made on its production line in the United States. I haven't uh, shot with these cameras. Sometimes you just end up with too many cameras to use. Uh, I would guess that th these perform pretty well. You know, there's no reason why it shouldn't. These probably have very decent lenses. I noticed that they're uh, marked in feet and that would make sense because Britain was not on the metric system. This camera had a small indicator to remind you what type of film you had loaded in the camera. Shall we weigh them? Model 2 weighs in at 15.8 ounces. And Model 3 weighs in at 15.8 ounces. So identical. This came with the camera. It was a small little... Um, this is sort of like a suede-like covering. This is vinyl, though. It did the job of protecting the camera. And it's a very fitted case. So once it slips into the case, you could then throw this over your shoulder or you could put it into a camera bag. But, you know, it's ni it's fairly nicely made. It's a nice little accessory to have for your uh, Kodak uh, 66. Uh, this is an accessory shoe. There is flash synchronization with each camera through a small post on the side of the shutter. Uh, this is the um, door release, the lens door release, and the top deck is made of plastic. It's uh, that Kodak gray that you often see in other cameras. Uh, it's not Bakelite, but it is plastic. So if you're looking for, um, you know, a rather unique camera, probably, and one that isn't going to break the bank, uh, keep an eye out for a Kodak uh, 66. I would guess that there probably are some in the United States, having been uh, brought back by either uh, Americans who were stationed overseas in the military or travelers, you know, who had been to uh, the UK or folks who um, emigrated to the US. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see any cameras uh, featured in a future uh, segment, please let me know in the comments below and keep on taking photos.